Medical genomics acquires and analyzes information pertaining to individual patient genomes with the purpose of preventing, treating, and curing diseases. It is truly a multidisciplinary field, and it includes genomics, biochemistry, population genetics, statistics, computer science, and clinical research. The Center for Medical Genomics at Penn State was founded in 2008. Over the years, the center has grown and became one of the most successful collaborative efforts linking both the University Park and College of Medicine campus. By collaborating with the College of Medicine, we can put our scientific questions in the clinical context while acquiring data on large patient cohorts. The Center for Medical Genomics provides opportunities for collaboration, particularly between researchers who spend their time in a lab focused on genetic factors and clinicians who want to know how genetics or epigenetics might be affecting their patient's health. In children, I look at how environmental exposures in the first few years of life can impact health trajectory through manipulation of epigenetics. One major project that I'm currently involved with looks at how epigenetic factors in saliva might be used to diagnose children with autism spectrum disorder. We look at things called microRNA in saliva, and they may be used to develop the first molecular test ever for autism. 25% of two to five-year-old children in the United States are already overweight or obese, so preventing that is very important. We've been fortunate to show in our randomized clinical trial that we can prevent rapid infant weight gain in the first year after birth and have babies be leaner at age one year when they receive our intervention. With the help of our collaborators up at University Park, we've been able to determine some interesting findings. My work focuses on functional data analysis. We've been working a lot to analyze weight trajectories in children. We've been trying to utilize genetic information and microbiome information to understand how these weight trajectories are associated with these sorts of omics data. We recently published a paper uh, where we found several strains of bacteria which were actually associated with particular accelerated weight trajectories. This multidisciplinary collaboration is key. Adding the genetic piece to the puzzle is critical so that we can really determine which interventions work for which children. We really need a very strong collaborative environment in order to work out these sorts of problems uh, just due to the sheer complexity. And so this has been really nice working with the center so that we can have this cohesive team. Collaborations are essential to function of the center. We enjoy and we build upon interacting with scientists with complementary expertise and skills. For us, this happens naturally. I'm a statistician. I was trained as a statistician, and in fact, I never really studied anything related to biology or medical research. The center helped hugely because we work together in a very integrated way. To study mitochondrial diseases and to investigate whether their occurrence is influenced by maternal age, we are studying the transmission of mitochondrial DNA mutations from the mothers to the children. We are sequencing and analyzing the mitochondrial DNA in families. With the data produced, we were able to produce estimates of the germline mitochondrial DNA bottleneck as well as mutation rate. Another very important thing was to investigate the association between the prevalence of heteroplasmies in a child and the age of the mother. This type of insights actually can only come about by this close intertwining of computation, data analysis into the biomedical research. This type of interdisciplinarity is really a hallmark of the center. I'm an established basic science researcher our focus for many years has been on the repeated sequences in the genome, particularly microsatellite sequences. We have a new paper examining these regions of the genome that we call detours for difficult to replicate. And we have identified hundreds of thousands of such regions in the genome. We hope that using our approach of combining experimentation, high throughput sequencing and genomics analyses together with statistical analyses that we can truly understand the mechanisms that are driving genome instability during cancer evolution. By doing this, we can identify novel targets for new cancer therapies or potentially identify biomarkers of tumor progression. 
There's a great reciprocal interplay and benefit from computational and wet lab people working together. For example, we were interested in deciphering the sequence of the Y chromosome in primates. We found that existing tools weren't really up to the task of assembling this genome. So we identified the, the gaps and we developed both computational and experimental tools that could fill those holes that were missing. Using this, we were able to discover new biology about the Y. For example, we found, surprisingly, that the gorilla Y chromosome was closer to the human than the chimp was, which was a surprising result. Graduate students and postdocs are central to all of our projects. By working with professors specializing in different disciplines, our students are acquiring interdisciplinary training. They also learn how to communicate their findings to scientists specializing in different disciplines. This makes them well prepared for their future careers.